In this little video, I want to talk about something that a beginner on the bass who's going to learn to play bluegrass bass should be aware of. And it has to do with the way the bass is tuned. And I'm presuming that every bass player, before they play, will tune their strings. So you're going to have a G, a D, an A, and an E. Okay, so you're in tune and you're ready to play. What needs to be impressed upon the beginner is that there is duplication of notes. So, if you have this note down here and you've tuned it to an A, there are other A's on the bass. One being right here. I got this high A and I have this low A. And it's good at the outset of playing to play those. This is an octave. Low octave, high octave. And play them together. And try to tune them together. Because I could be off here. Too flat or too sharp. And when you got them locked together, you have found the octave. you'll have an octave also on the E string. There's your low E and you're going to have a high E. Same thing. Find that note and make the match. So be aware of that octave, first of all. The second thing is the unison. And that is, let's say your first string, not let's say, it is a G. There's always a G on the next lower string somewhere. And somewhere, there's that same note. So I'm playing the fifth position, or what you'd call the fifth fret on electric. The fifth on the second string is produces the same pitch as the open first. Now we'll caution you, don't practice these unless you have tuned your bass. Because if your G string is flat, you're going to learn to play this one flat. You'll be flat because your open string is flat. So get your open strings in tune. This is something I do to kind of get my head right at a gig and to kind of lock in to where I should be playing. I want to know where position two is. That's de determined by the octave. Your high A note and your low A note will confirm where the two position is all the way across. And then I want to know where the five is. The five is confirmed by that unison. If I play five on this string, the second string, and I can confirm it with the open string, the next higher string, and that works all the way across. Those should match, be exactly the same pitch. So if one's a little high, you can blame your finger. It's, don't blame the open string. That's flat. Here it is, right together. So you're gonna you're gonna tune the fives to match the next higher open string. And you're gonna tune the twos to match skip a string. That gets your octaves and your You could even get your electronic tuning machine out. Play the first string, get it dead on, then play that same note on the second string. And if the tuner says it's in 
tune, then play them together. And get that feeling locked into your mind. Where is two? Where is five? Then you can interpolate and get the other ones. You can, based on where two is, you know three is higher and one is lower and four is under five. And you can use your ear to tune those up. But that's a good place to start, is to understand that relationship. But there's always an octave two strings higher at the second position. And these relationships are what makes it possible to play patterns in different locations, to have copies. Like you're up here playing an A, and you know you can also do it down here because of that relationship, that octave. So anyway, that's just a little exercise to get you listening to your bass, number one, and tuning your fingered notes. Get that to a good sounding octave. This high A with the low A, the high E with the low E. They shouldn't be fighting each other. And then get your fives lined up. If it's too sharp, come down a little. playing just visually, you got marks on your bass or whatever, and not listening, you're not going to play in tune. You've got to listen and you've got to adjust a little bit. You'll see me sometimes, you know, honing in on that note. I'm trying to get that match. You should work on that too. Your twos and fives.